senior citizen of the group. I am the oldest of our group of seven. Uh, I really thought it was a great opportunity for our uh, younger people to, in fact, improve themselves, advance themselves, and maybe have other job opportunities within an organization with the same goals and objectives that, uh, that we were looking for. So with that in mind, uh, we made the move. We are now located in McHenry, right behind the uh, Jewel on 120, and we, in fact, uh, uh, the Public Works, McHenry Public Works building is right there next to us, where we are neighbors, and in fact, get our snow plow pretty quickly there. So that's, <laughs> so that's always a good thing. But the decision to go with Robinson really stemmed from the fact that Robinson deals with municipal governments. They're not big in commercial, they're not big in industrial, they're not into that. A lot of that they certainly are in, and do a lot of work within uh, 53 or 4 municipalities, and that's really what our guys were looking for, for the opportunity for advancement. I did bring along with me Mr. Steve Zayner and Mr. Bill Cusson, who are regional managers with uh, with Robinson, and they will have an opportunity to, to say a few words and talk a little bit about Robinson. But we are excited to continue our work with the Village of Hainsworth. In fact, we have been doing work now for nearly two months. The end of February will be two months providing you with the same service, the same quality, the same excellent response to anything that uh, anybody asks for or resident uh, questions. As a matter of fact, I think we just helped the former mayor here the other day with a, a couple water issues, and, and that, of course, is, is fun to do. So we, we, uh, we are here. We are, uh, we are excited. We are excited under the Robinson uh, engineering name, and we're ready to continue our uh, good relationship uh, and, and actually great relationship with the Village of Hainesville. Uh, with that said, then I would introduce Mr. Steve Zayner to talk a little bit about Robinson. I did tell him, and I will tell all of you, I'm limiting him to 10 minutes, and I have, and I have an egg timer with me so that we should so that we can take that and turn that on because I understand that you guys, I looked at your agenda, you got 300 things to do and so, you know, I, I clearly understand that. So with that, thank you and thank you for all of your support through the years. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, I'm Steve Zayner. I'm a Robinson employee. Robinson Engineering is uh, about a 77-year-old engineering firm. We've been doing municipal engineering for that entire time. Um, the, Probably the biggest thing that you'll see out of Robinson is that while we are very good engineers, we really enjoy the client service. That's the part of it that we really, you know, that's the part that you strive for. You develop relationships with the clients, and that's certainly what Terry and the boys bring to the table. They have a long history of, of dealing with clients that, you know, they, they meet their needs. They help them out. They know them all. And that's part of, of the business that we enjoyed for 77 years. Robinson has clients that we've had for 20, 30, 40, 50, 65 years as a continuous engineer. You don't get that by doing, you know, just running in and doing a project. You get that by establishing a relationship and understanding that this is this is an ongoing process. We're we're just little cogs in the machine and we're just helping everybody go along and get along. And that's that's really what we're all about. We do all aspects of Water, wastewater, stormwater, roads, all, all of the components. Um, we're very, very thankful to have the opportunity to work with Terry and boys. And, and thank you for the opportunity to continue to serve the village of Haynesville. That's all I have. If you have any questions, I have, I've handed out the book, and I'm sure that you're all ready to quiz me on those, on those points, because that's stimulating to read it. You can't, I, I just, ooh. Yeah, I'm so it does. It does. <laughs> There's so much I, I do have a question on section D. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, <I'm doing> <laughs> right. Thank you. Um, I did bring some more brochures with more pictures instead of all the words. Oh, so we like so, pictures. <laughs> we have the crayon. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Um, can I just I think I, I think we just brought eight. I'm sorry. Okay. 
I will get some water. Okay, bring them on by. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Or if any time in the future you have questions, well, let me know my business card's in there. Let Mr. Brown know, and I will be here with any split. Well, I'll just say for the record, uh, thank you for coming tonight. We welcome you, and we have not had even a hiccup. So the transition was very smooth. So thank you. Thank you very much. So questions will come. I don't have any offhand, but I'm sure they'll come. We'll know where to find you. Great. Okay. All right. And, uh, excuse me. Yeah. And feel free to leave at this point. Yeah. I, you want I was to just going to say. There's a lot of cake. <laughs> <laughs> we have cake. We're going to have some of the best board meetings in Lake County. And if you don't like the material, you'll usually like the refreshments. So. <laughs> At this time, we'll move on to public comments. Does the clerk have anybody to report in? No. No takers? Going, going, gone. I have a question for Steve. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see um, a McHenry location. Is that a new one? Yes, it is. Randall? We'll open that up and I'll push you to here. Okay. Cool. The, next one, the next iteration of that will reflect the McHenry office. Thank you. If you have any other questions, my phone's in there and I'm available. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion for the omnibus vote agenda, please? So, yes. Ro yes. John and Georgian. Okay. Rocco. Trustee Stiernoski. Aye. Priest. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Daly. Aye. And Washington. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, at this time we'll move on to our reports and communications and we're going to kick off with our village engineer, Greg Bruin. And for the purpose of the record, <laughs> it may be a little confusing to people watching this later, um, our water and waste operation has moved and is now under the umbrella of Robinson Engineer. Our village engineer for our other engineering services still is Manhart Consulting. Greg, take it away. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a few items today. Uh, Cranberry North Townhomes, there was an issue with their detention pond not draining down. Uh, we believe it might be related to the Washington Street work that's out there. Uh, we did uh, notify Lake County to do the transportation. Obviously, with the weather, they cannot uh, ascertain what the issue is, but they are aware of it. And then once the snow and ice clears, uh, they're going to make an additional inspection and see if there's anything that they can uh, do with regard to the bottom of the drainage. Uh, the Cranberry Lake Road resurfacing, uh, we were awarded an $80,000 grant. Uh, that $80,000 is approximate based on the actual funds that the Lake County gets from the uh, federal government. Uh, those uh, monies and that grant award, we would like to get that finalized by June 1st. Uh, in the meantime, we plan on starting the engineering for the uh, actual construction documents to complete the uh, road resurfacing for the Cranberry Lake townhomes. Uh, Washington Street, uh, also Lake County Division of Transportation, uh, Phase 2 and Phase 3 for Washington Street from Haynesville Road all the way to Lake Street, which includes the underpass, is scheduled to start 2015 with bids due. 2014. Originally, those two phases were going to be staggered, but it looks as at least uh, initially that those two projects are going to take place simultaneously uh, next year. And then with the uh, Lake County wholesale, wholesale sewer, there should be a dollar fifty surcharge added to everybody's uh, residential bill for sewer surcharges related to the excess flow facilities leading towards the Fox Lake. Treatment plan. And that is all. Okay, uh, a question, Greg. Um, the um, resurfacing of Cranberry Lake, is that including Cranberry North or is that going to be a separate thing when you do Deer Point or something? Uh, we had anticipated doing Cranberry North also. Oh, you do? Okay. 
And, and Holiday Lane. Holiday Lane, yes. Okay. Just clarify. Thank you. Greg, right, one other question. Uh, as far as construction on Rollins Road and the starting of the other pass over on Washington, will that one be finished when they start this? Or is it going to be like, <laughs> we're going to just, that, that I know well. It's going to be one big mess. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, I believe that, that uh, they will dovetail into each other, but I'll get a, a firmer schedule for you for next time. Yeah, okay. No, one won't be done before the other. That I guarantee you won't. Okay, our attorney, Jim Rack. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this month we developed the Intergovernmental Agreement with Lake County for inspection and plan review services that you see on the agenda of the business tonight. And also uh, work with Mayor Soto to draft correspondence to our residents on Tall Oak uh, to invite them to meet with us to discuss bringing the conservation easement into compliance with the Army Corps of Engineers scheme. Okay, we will move on to our public works superintendent, Jeff Gately. Thank you, Mayor. I've got some interesting reading here. Uh, with the winter and how horrific it's been, I took some time and I put together some stats. I've never really been a stat guy. Um, from December through January, uh, we have spent 705 hours uh, plowing. That's just for the contract and plow service we have. The village, myself, and the seasonals that I have on staff have spent about 275 hours just doing senior driveways, sidewalks, village hall, utilities, water tower, and such. So these numbers are huge. So just not that everybody doesn't know this, I just kind of want to put stuff into perspective here. We want to thank you for doing that for free. <laughs> <laughs> Salt has been the talk of the town. Uh, I went over to the bend this afternoon. We have about 40 tons left, uh, which is two semi-loads. That will get us through the rest of the season as long as we keep um, restricting the use, just doing the intersections, curves, any hot spots that come up. We just can't go down and install the whole street anymore. Unless there's an ice storm, then obviously, as weather conditions deteriorate, uh, we'll make that judgment call. Uh, I'm just trying to stretch out what we have left can get more if we need to, if a dire emergency comes up. However, uh, we're looking at upwards of $250 a ton to wow. get more running here. We're currently paying $57. $250 a ton. $57. So about $200 more to get a ton of salt in here. So Do you have to drive to Iowa to get it? They, they, they will deliver. Oh, that's a They will deliver. So there's a bonus for that. Which the finance committee just approved. 
developing a budget which the finance committee just approved tonight for at least that we put the official documents up, uh, we included in a reserve account, sort of account, if we don't need it, we're not going to spend it, an additional $150,000 in streets just in case there's substantial uh, winter damage. And we should be able to make that assessment, I would think, probably by the end of May. Everything should probably have settled down by then. Sure. Just in case Great. Case. Hopefully, we won't need it or we need very little of it. But, Jeff, you didn't hear this. No. I know. <laughs> 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 Some exciting news. I spoke with uh, Peter Adrian from Smallco, and I have confirmed that our next recycling event for electronics will be at the Public Works building on April 26th. Oh, good. That day is available. Yeah, we're going to do it from 9 to 1. Uh, in addition to electronics, the first time this year, we're going to be also taking textiles, which is a new program that Swafo is offering right now. Clothes that you can't donate, you know, sheets. Towels, any type of textile you can bring over. And, and it is a it. very cool program. And, and I know it does get recycled. I think the plants in Chicago somewhere. Yeah, I, I one know, in Chicago, and I don't know if it's out by Rockford. Yeah, there could be yeah. one out there. Um, so that's exciting. So that is confirmed. So we will get that up on the website um, as soon as we're saying there's a chance tomorrow, by the end of the week, what have you. Um, We've had, the cold weather has taken a pretty good call on our street lights. We just had six of them that were repaired uh, last week. Uh, and talking with Eric Christensen, he, he's been not really barking about it, but the fixtures are getting extremely close to the end of their useful life. When you open up the tops on these things, the wires that come through from the ballast and go up to the photo cell, they're all cracking, they're melting, they're burning up. We really need to focus on Getting these things replaced. Um, and the housings look like how Oh, yeah, things. everything is just, just um, yeah. you know, I did say, you know, we're aware of the problem. We do have some money. You know, I did put some in the budget. I don't know if we're going to be able to do half, all, whatever. But we sh hopefully we'll be able to start doing something this upcoming year. Okay. So this is <laughs> back to the budget. Honey, Hunter, no. Actually, this is, this is $115,000 mm -hmm. for replacing all. Village street lights, the heads on it, is in the budget that is going to be proposed in March. Kelly, my question When can we start spending that money? Or can we? I know it hasn't been approved yet. In other words, you going to jump on it? If, if, if well, we're also going to have to go out to bid. We're going to have to go out to bid. By the time you go out for bid and the budget uh, breaks, yeah. we'll be into the new fiscal yeah. year, and the, the board will yeah. either approve the budget March, April. So, May so 1st. we're not going to consider going out for bid soon. On the fixtures. On the fixtures, on the heads. Okay. Okay. Any way you get, how much money you get stuck in the move to the lift station? Uh, whatever was requested for next year. I thought it was up for this year because it's out there been a little bit lagging. Um, I thought that's still in there. We have $150,000 for that was in I didn't hear fully here. Well, I thought we had two payments of $75,000 to move the lift station on Washington. The force made. Oh, the force made. The force made. Oh, okay. yeah. The lift, uh, yeah, oh, lift station. Yeah, because I was confused too like, by lift station. Yeah, we're, not moving like, lift station. we're not moving a lift station. We're not moving a lift station. Well, I, I, I guess we can answer the total, this. Right? The total project is going to be paid out this next coming budget year. That's going to be part of the approval of the next. Did we have any in this budget year? We had it in here for this year, but the project has been delayed. Yeah, right. But honestly, will they, I mean, by the time you go out for bid and everything, will that project be happening this fiscal year? If that's what you're thinking. Well, then you can go out for bid now and you can move that money. Move the microphone close to I don't know that I don't know that you're gonna solve this tonight. No, no, I think no, no, no. I think I think let's follow up tomorrow. Okay. Just, just so it's on the on the radar, I just yeah. wanted to mention yeah. I mean I just think it would be done in this coming year budget. Yeah. You know, the new budget. I mean that would be great. But, well, but if there's something worth looking at, let's look at it. Let, let me clarify one of the what what does it cost to repair one head roughly? What I've been doing when they go out, I haven't put in a new ballast, a new lamp, a new photo. 
post house, so it's usually about three hundred and fifty. So you've got six to go. Twelve six. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. I have more. <laughs> Don't Keep going, Jeff. Um, let's see. Talk about small street streetlights. Uh, I have been working. We did put together a RFP for the water contract services because we have to get a new contract with. You know, we have to go out to bid to do the formal for Robinson and whoever else uh, would choose to bid on it. Uh, Lynn and I have looked at it. We'll be making some, you know, proofing it per se. We'll probably have to have Jim look at it so we can get, at least get that out, get those bids in because we just extended the current contract that we accepted at was, I believe, at the end of April. The contract that we had with Manhart that got assigned. So we need to take care of, we need to get to the next level there. So that document. And I made a few notes, right. so, so we'll be ready to give it to you yeah. in the next stage. Okay. And then uh, as soon as we get that one uh, ready to go, uh, I'll have one ready for snow plowing because we have to do that as well this year to get that request for proposal. So we need to kind of figure out if we want to do a three year contract for that as well, three year or five year. And that's up for discussion. Um, the only other thing I really want to stress, um, the building next door and how grateful that I am that we purchased this place with the extreme cold we had this winter, um, just the response times and, and the snow removal times and everything streamlined because we're able to keep all these vehicles inside where it's heated. We don't have the salt freezing in the back of the trucks. We're having a lot less breakdowns. So it's just made life easier than you could ever know having that building next door, so I just wanted to reiterate that, that it's being used to its full potential. Thank you. Just to go back to the light repair thing, we mentioned we just repaired six at about 300, 350 a pop. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're experiencing with that, that doesn't mean that it's going to last. We spend that money and they blow again, right? Am I exaggerating? Yeah, I mean, they're, they'll be good for, the, if they put in a new ballast, Typically, it's good for another, theoretically, if it was a newer fixture, it'd be good for another 10 years. The problem we're having now is that the interiors, the wiring on the inside is getting so old and decrepit with the heat so early, the internal wiring is just going to start melting. It's happened on two of them already where they actually had to put new wiring in from the photo cell down into the ballast just because of the design, the way the heat is. And it's just from years of sun. So if we replace all of these heads, should we replace it from the base wire up? The, from the base to the top is fine. It's the actual the inside portion. Inside the head? Inside the head okay. is the part that's failing. Okay. And that's a, that's a thinner, that's like a 12 gauge or 14 gauge wire, where the ones that come up are a little thicker, probably like an 8 to 10. So those are in good shape. And the installation on the new ones, there won't be as much heat because it's LED and they dissipate the heat differently. Uh, the electricity to be used will be a lot less. Probably save, I think, about a third. So that cost is going to go down. Just comment on for the I I believe they do. It, it, it's still a set rate. But once you change the fixture head out, it's using the energy uh, efficient. Yeah, you know, the less energy, then we'll get credit for whatever that's going to use. So it'll, it'll drop. Okay. Anything else from Public Works? Yeah, it's all for me tonight. Questions for Public Works? Okay, we're going to move on to our police chief, who is with us tonight, and he's brought his crew with. And you get the whole floor, gentlemen, since you're hiding out there. <laughs> kind of like a floor show. <laughs> well, we were talking about some stimulating reading. <laughs> this is now almost though a half year old, uh, but the annual police service report, um, which I guess you've got halfway plenty of time to go through anyway. Um, I actually have something that's, if, if you don't mind, uh, take us about five minutes to set up something that we just got today that's uh, really sort of cool that I've been talking about for you for a year now. Um, it's finally come to fruition, and it is our automated vehicle locators. On our squad cars. Very cool. You can actually see where the squad cars are on a map 
connected in real time. Um, we have it right here. We'll try to set it up and see if we can project it over there or something so you can see. We got a whole, we just went through a whole brand new computer change. Do you uh, want our the last two days. Or uh, channel take care of it? Yeah, we'll uh, we get that on. We can get this thing projected up there. Okay. But uh, it's been about a year, year and a half in the making, um, getting this whole new computer data dispatch set up. Um, we went through Blending, obviously. Um, and we went from what they call Mobile 7 to a version 10. So we've gone up three versions um, in about two days. And uh, it, uh, it was uh, exciting to say the least. Uh, Dick Welton, our IT guy, um, was there until about 10 30 last night. He's working on things to get it going for today. Um, we actually get the live kickoff today, and it's working. Um, so it's just a thing that um, goes along with our reporting. I mentioned um, earlier to you, Mayor, that we had changed um, the reporting uh, a little bit. We were going from what we were going to consider a call value type thing. Guys, guys, to, uh, we can't hear. We can't hear the chief talking. We we're going to go the foyer or stay here and listen. We were going from a call uh, type basis to a time type reporting. Um, as you saw the first month, uh, we did it, I think, in November, maybe December, a little bit in November, then in December, where when we did residential checks, um, we used to count that as a number, that counted as a call, a call type. Um, we're finding out through our whole system, not just in Haynesville, but throughout our whole system, it was accounting for about 19,000 calls a year. Um, I decided that I thought time is a more interesting study than a number of calls. I could drive through um, Haynesville for five minutes and call it a call. And then I can leave it. I can come back five minutes later and call it another call. And then I can leave 10 minutes later and call it another call. Um, I decided if I measured it this way, um, we take the information we get through the computer and our statuses. We have a status of residential and non-residential patrol, specifically for Haynesville and specifically for Grace Lake, so we can separate it out. And we combine it with this new nav information that we have with these vehicle locators. And it'll show us that when the cars are in Haynesville, where the cars are in Haynesville, and when we have an issue, uh, you know, who knows? We have some speeding issue, or we have a traffic crash issue, or we have a break in, or we have this or that. I can go back in time and I can see where the cars were when this may have happened. Um, I can go back and see um, how many times we've been through uh, a certain residential neighborhood, how long we spent there, um, was the officer parked at a location for a certain amount of time. Um, all kinds of things that help us verify what you're paying for, uh, police protection. Um, things that we can show you that are more transparent than um, this that's stack of numbers. Next year, this report's going to look a lot different. Um, next year, this report's going to be, instead of a stack of numbers, a collection of hours and a collection of activities um, that we've done. This report, because it was of last year, um, it was done by Derek uh, Soderholm. I don't know if you know or not, but Derek's gone now. So um, we'll be generating the report ourselves. And in some of this, um, especially in the um, investigation section, we're describing some of our um, investigations. Um, there was an old, let's say, an antiquated way of reporting um, cases and investigations, where it says here we had 58 total cases assigned. Uh, that would be that there was 58 cases assigned to a detective from the village in Angeville in that year's time. Uh, I think we all know in this room that there were way more than 58 cases um, assigned to detectives. And a more, uh, I did a little bit, just a little bit of um, digging on this. And just in my little 10 minutes worth of looking up stats the correct way, again, um, I am a stats man. <laughs> There's actually 467 cases. Um, that detectives investigated um, that were in Haynesville. So not all the cases that we took, certainly not all the, the uh, cases we handled or the calls we went on or anything like that, 
Those were calls that were actually assigned to an investigator for an active investigation. Some of those, some of those cases are still open. And we had several burglaries and some other things that happened. Burglaries went up um, this past year. Um, and of course, it looks like they shot way up because I think the year before we had eight or nine, and then this year we had 14 or something. So, by, you know, when you look at the charts that, uh, that Derek has put in here, you know, it looks like the crime doubled, um, but really not as severe as, as what we like to think. Jeff has the map up here, and it's, I guess it's kind of sort of hard to see for you, but maybe for me to zoom in a little yeah. bit. You can little back white up, uh, back up the, the back up the cart. The white spots that you see moving around are actually our squad cars right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, Time to do the I told all five of them to be in this parking lot right now. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's just, you can see how this, I don't know if you've ever, if anybody's ever shown you the old version of, of how the CAD worked, but this is a brand new version, just launched today. We do all our reports on this. We can go to the unit. Uh, status monitor. We have a, it's called the US Everything's got these little cartoon like pictures, which I guess makes it easier for the younger guys, you know. <laughs> but uh, all this tells us what's going on right here. Um, you'll see the different uh, officers' names. You'll see what they're currently doing, what their assignment is. Um, Eric McNeil is Angel's favorite officer, by the way. And I don't know if all of you know that. Yes, we do. But uh, there you go. <laughs> and uh, but he is uh, assigned actually to Grays Lake tonight. Although, look where he is. He's a little residential patrol. You see the Angel RP there? It shows me that he says he's on the Angel residential patrol. So if Jeff were to go and look at the map and look up here, we'd be able to find him in the map wherever he is in Hainesville. And uh, my eyes aren't as good as Jeff's, but uh, I'm sure we'll, there you go. I don't know what, if you zoom in on that, I'll tell you what the street he's actually on. So, there you go. So, um, I don't know, just sort of something I kind of wanted you guys to see more than just the stuff that's on paper, but the stuff that goes into what we're truly trying to look at here, what we're truly trying to look at is police protection for your community. Um, we're doing what we can to improve what we do, um, to be out there more, and to verify more when we are out there. Um, we look forward this year to hopefully giving some more presentations. I know we gave one last year. Um, I know we could talk with Wally about um, doing another one. And uh, the video that I brought you is sitting on my desk. Also, <laughs> of course, but I'll get it to you. I'll bring it over here tomorrow and drop it off. Um, but it is a video of you know drunk driving and consequences of things. It's got the team, you know, date night drama crash thing on it. It's a lot of good stuff on um, it. And it is suitable for, you know, putting on a website or anything like that. There's nothing bad in it. Sorry, I haven't got back to you on that either, so. No, uh, you know, I've had it sitting on my desk for like a month or month and a half, and I wanted to get it to you, but I wanted to show it to you, and then I was going to bring it tonight, of course. I got so wrapped up in this because it's brand new today that I forgot it sits on my desk. <laughs> well, you've been working hard at this. Yeah, one so, squad off to the left isn't moving very far. No. The funny thing is that they all know we're watching them right now, so they ain't know. <laughs> but because uh, I did give them a fair warning, I said, well, yeah, please don't all be at the Dunkin' Donuts. Isn't the one on the left, though? Isn't that you in the parking lot? But uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's actually that computer right there because it's got GPS on it. All our computers, this is how it works. All our computers have GPS on it. We've tapped into that into a program that's an automatic vehicle locator. So we can tell all this stuff, we can put all these things together, but really the reason we purchased this is if, it's, if an officer gets into trouble, can't get to his radio, has a car crash, gets shot, something bad happens, we know we can at least know where his car is at and we can start looking there. Um, that's the real reason behind this. Um, but it gives us a whole lot more information. Um, it gives us a whole lot of what I think is um, transparency as to what we do. Uh, I mean, numbers are numbers. I could create numbers all day long and, and give you one of these and say, look, I had 6,000 calls in your, in your beat this year. Or I can show you what we do and how we do it 
and try to educate everybody on, on what we really want to do here. Um, and I think what we really want to do is what you want to do is to make contact with the community, get out there, give some talks, give some defensive driving talks, things like that. I mean, there were things that I was um, doing in Glenview where people thought I was nuts that I don't think people would think I was nuts here if I came to a block party with a sheet and a projector and showed a little safe driving thing for 15 minutes at a block party. I don't think anybody here would be wanting to kick my rear end out of the block party. Um, you know, the guys in Glenview weren't used to stuff like that or ideas like that. Um, this is a town where I think things like that are very important to people. Um, we want our kids to drive responsibly. We want our neighbors to drive responsibly. We don't want people passing buses. There's nothing but kids in this town. I mean, this town is full of children. On, on Halloween, it's, uh, like I said last year, I'll say it again this year, I tried to make it the safest day there could be because it's a day just for kids. Um, and it's a day for safety. And you'll see five or six of us driving around you know, in, in little areas, but that's what does it, that's what's important. And those are the things we try to push here. We don't try to push, you know, for instance, we did this many checks, we did that many checks. I mean, sure, we all care about it, but there is a job we're trying to do here. There's a mission that we have here that, that we're trying to carry out for you. And I, I hope that I'm on the right track of carrying out that mission. Um, but, you know, it's sort of weird, it's that different, uh, you know, this is Haynesville and that's Grays Lake and you got the same cops, but you got sort of a different policing attitude. And um, I think our policing attitude here is more, um, way more service oriented and way more, um, we want to have a relationship with the village and um, we want the village to have a relationship with us. I know, uh, I'm sure all of you know, we have an office in here and um, that's been getting used quite a bit. And uh, when they tear up Washington Road, that's going to get used quite a bit more. And in fact, we may end up just parking somebody here for a shift. Um, this may become an actual substation. We may actually just step right out of here. Um, I don't know that it'll come to that, but if it does, we have the plan to do well, it. Well, I think that when we touch on that messy traffic when they're doing Washington and Rollins, right. that that will become a necessity. Um, I also just want to say that um, uh, with the officers utilizing this office more and more, I and the staff really enjoy having the officers come in. It's nice to make that contact. And, you know, not that we feel, you know, we feel very safe, right. you know, it's rare that we actually feel unsafe uh, in our village hall, but even just with this weather scares and everything, there's a comfort level I think we right. all have when we see the police right. running regularly, we appreciate it. And you know, as, as strangely standoffish as cops can be, um, you know, you think it's so strange because you take this job because you're sort of a people person to begin with, um, but then you're all afraid to meet and talk with people <laughs> because it's always on some bad level somehow you know um it's been really nice i think for the officers to come in here and be able to talk to people on nice people on a nice basis that don't give a problem and they can there's just some talk you know and it's kind of nice to have the it's nice to have the back and forth um i think this is great i i kind of looks like a man I think we better, well, you should see what are really moving around. No, no, the so, question is, how um, now do we get to put our children on here so yeah. I can put a GPS <laughs> on Jimmy's truck? <laughs> we need to be in the air, you don't want to do that. You don't need to get that air You don't need to get that Yes, I do. Okay, because I was going to say, I got a couple of those over at this point. But it's, it's cool, you know, the other, the other thing that we like to do is we have um, a thing that we're going to try doing closest car dispatch. Sometimes people aren't in their beat, sometimes people are a little more west in their beat than the east or whatever. This enables us to have the closest car. Sometimes a Haynesville car isn't actually the closest car to a Haynesville call. Sometimes there's somebody right over in West Trail that's even closer I can, to the call. Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. So yeah. we're going to go to this closest car dispatch, which this assists us with. Obviously it tells us where the cars are, so we know who should be dispatched. Um, it's a lot of uh, technology we sort of got uh, all at once. Um, it's way improved over what we had. What we had was pretty great. Um, I got a 
complaints about what we had, but you know, the bills went out and it got us the Cadillac here, so we're putting it to good use. So and what do you as is this view? Yes. The dispatch center? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. But more importantly, our own officers and our supervisors have this view. So our own supervisors and officers know where each other are at. Right? So if somebody makes a traffic stop and a guy knows that he's close, he knows he can just go by there. I, I was just thinking about your closest call, since most of the dispatching goes to Glenview, at least that's what they thought. Yes. So, and that, that is an undertaking that is separate from this, um, because that's something that has to be actually programmed into the CAD. The other towns that are part of dispatching Glenview, uh, in fact, Glenview, Morton Grove, and Niles, the closest car dispatch, we will be the first town requesting to do closest car dispatch. Um, and to me, it just makes sense. There's no reason not to do it. Um, I don't care if somebody's, you know, somebody might have the B1 and be on the east side of Craig's Lake, but you know what? They might have been the ones over here at the subway, and something happens over here at 120 to 134, there's a car accident. I fully expect that that finishes lunch and go over there. So, and that's just the way it's going to be. Um, there's no escape in it. It's in the computer. They can't cry it out. You can't get to any, you can do nothing to break it. So, um, we have outside antennas on their cars, so we have great reception on this thing. And uh, like I say, this is just one, this is probably the most impressive part to actually see, but this is just one tiny part of, of what we're doing. The electronic reporting's gotten way better than the whole shooting match. So um, we're good to go with a lot of things. We're good to go with having sort of a substation here. Uh, way better equipped for that than we were even six months ago. So, um, you know, I think we're going to have a hard summer with road construction and things like that. It's going to be up. Um, but I also think that we're going to be well prepared. So, so in the end, you can actually tell us how many hours and how many miles you're spending in Ainsville? Uh, I could probably actually break it down to miles. I don't know how tough that would be, but I can definitely tell you the hours okay. without a problem. Yes. And that's what you're going to start to get. That's what you're going to No, you can not have the lights and things. But that's the kind of thing that I plan to prepare for you for reports rather than there were 64 of these calls, you're still going to get that. Right. But um, I would rather have you know that we spent uh, 220 hours patrolling your town. Right. And we did these calls, we did these other things, but this patrol section that used to be just calls, you know, 93 residential checks. What does that really mean to right. you? Know? Now I can say, no, it's not 93 residential checks, it's 140 hours of driving around. So, you know, where exactly were we driving? Well, I can even break that down if you want me to. It's going to take a while. Well, it can happen. So, I mean, I just feel that it makes everything transparent and it gives you the type of policing that you want. And then when you see out there, you see something that you don't like, you see something that you do like, you see something that you want more of or you want less of. It's so easy for us to customize it because we know exactly where we've been with it. So, and uh, you know, I saved that all for tonight because I knew there was going to be cake. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Gene, I want to thank you for all this. Uh, it's a great work that you guys are doing. You know, and, uh, thank you. The thing is, is, Jerry and I were just talking about your year end report. We were trying to figure out how, what question we can ask and how we can determine. And you were, you, actually, this is the first year that you guys put actually hours. And it's been a little lot different this yeah. year. It's, it's, uh, it's Next year, Brian's going to be writing it probably. Um, Brian and Sergeant Hymos is not here tonight. Um, those two will be writing it. Um, but I guess you were. Well, and, and I just, I want, I'm going to, I'm going to speak diplomatically <coughs> for what Phil's trying to avoid saying. You know, he inherited that report. Right. No. And that not in it, but it's what he inherited, and I know he, from the day he came on board, he had a vision of where he ultimately wanted to go. How many times have I talked to you? It's a, what's going on here? And, and we want to be to 52 patrols this month, what's going on? Yeah. Right. Like that. right. So. And you know, I think this this report really, you know, it's probably, I don't know, 15 pages or something like that. Uh, I could probably whip out a three-page report that would have more information that you're looking for in it, um, you know, than this does. But we'll break it all out for you. And like I said, it's easily customizable. So um, if we just have another link that we can add to it, that I think makes more sense, you know, it makes it more transparent. 
And then, like I say, it makes it so you can customize it the way you want it. If you want more of this, you want more of that, we got it. You know, Hainesville Fest is coming up with things. We get ready for that and gear it up. Um, you know, we're ready. So we're already planning on, on the road construction. And, you know, we started planning early, which is good because we are completely set up. We just have to get in and put this level on that computer. And we're done. So we got everything we need to go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now don't leave, gentlemen. Uh -huh. um, before we continue and move on with the other reports, um, first I want to offer congratulations on behalf of the Village of Haynesville to our attorney, Jim Rock, who on Valentine's Day, February 14th, became a grandfather for the first time. Beautiful baby girl. And we have three. <laughs> Trying to figure it out. <laughs> we have a cake to celebrate Jim becoming a grandfather and welcoming, welcoming Emmy into the world. So uh, we're going to cut the cake, Jim. Motion to eat cake. Yeah. Motion to eat cake. We're going to take a few minutes break. So, Dave, you can break with the camera for yep. a minute so you yep. get a nice big 